Hello everyone, welcome to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be presenting you a static cardiology rhythm and scenario. And on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a one minute and 30 second timer. This timer is here because it closely mimics the actual average time you should be spending on each card during a national registry scenario. At the end of the card, I'll give you an explanation and a treatment for the rhythm that you saw. Good luck. Three, two, one. So this card should be pretty straightforward. Just looking at the rhythm, a lot of you folks already know what this is, but there are some clues here in the actual scenario. In the scenario, I mentioned that there's an AED that's been attached and you've delivered two shocks. AEDs are only designed to recognize and shock one of two rhythms, either pulseless ventricular tachycardia or V-fib. Let's go ahead and take a look at this rhythm a little bit more closely. Now right away you can tell that this rhythm is chaotic and unorganized and very wide, chunky in appearance. These are all the hallmarks of ventricular fibrillation. Now I know that there's some elements here that may appear like it's torsades. You'll notice that there's a little bit of that like twisting movement here. But torsades, you have to remember that the twisting of the points, that flipping of the axis, is very, very consistent and predictable. In this one, there's no semblance of regularity to the rhythm, so this is V-fib. Now let's take a look at the scenario. Now by default, it's important to remember that V-fib is never considered stable. This is always unstable. So your patient has collapsed while waiting for the train. They're performing CPR, have attached an AED. Before the patient collapsed, he clutched his chest. Now, this isn't really important to your treatment per se, but this may be something that you'd mention perhaps in the H's and T's. We'll cover that in just a little bit. They've administered two shocks with the AED, which again points me towards that ventricular fibrillation as the diagnosis. So right now, your patient is pulseless, apneic, and unresponsive. So they hit all the criteria of instability. And I use the criteria, the acronym CHAD, which stands for Cardiac Insufficiency, Hypotension, Alteration of Mental Status, and Dyspnea. Now, if your patient is having CPR performed or they're pulseless, by default, they are unstable. Let's move on to the treatment. Now, I've seen students burn all their time on treatment for CPR cards. Really, the trick here to avoid using your entire six minutes up is to do everything in chunks. So let me explain what I mean here. So first and foremost, of course, you're gonna regurgitate the scene-safe BSI IVO2 monitor. This, this is true for every patient that you're going to take care of in static cardiology. In order to get this card done in a rapid fashion, we're going to take our treatment in chunks. So I'll be doing cycles of CPR, 30 compressions and two breaths. I'm performing defibrillation every two minutes. And you can then specify 
I'm increasing my joulage from 200 up to 360, or I'm sticking with 200, or I'm sticking with 360, but I'm defibrillating every two minutes. This is to prevent you from listing the card in order, listing your treatment in order, and then continuing this cycle until you run out of time. Really, I'm doing chunks of treatment, cycles of CPR, defibrillation every two minutes. I'm gonna be giving epinephrine, one milligram of one to 10,000, IV push every three to five minutes. I'm going to be giving my antidysrhythmic here. My primary one is gonna be amiodarone, 300 milligrams IV push after the first dose of epi, and then a second amiodarone, but this time at 150 milligrams given after the second epinephrine. I'm gonna consider an advanced airway, and then I'm gonna consider my H's and T's. That's all I would need to pass you as an evaluator. You can continue though for some brownie points and say, I'm then going to consider giving a second line antidysrhythmic such as lidocaine, such as magnesium, whatever the case is. You could even go further and say that one of the likely causes of this arrest was a coronary thrombosis based on the patient's age and based on what they were doing before they went out, clutching the chest. But you don't need to say all that. All you need to do is list what's up here and I would give you full points as an evaluator. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make your own playlists with other static cardiology videos that I've made for you here. You can shuffle them up and create little decks of your own. Till I see you next, have a good rest of your night.